In this video series, I'll demonstrate how to use ANSYS Fluence Adjoint Solver to optimize the shape of an air duct that is packaged within a constricted space, such as you might find within the dashboard of a car. I will optimize the geometry with the goal of improving multiple performance measures that matter to designers, and show how to export the improved design so that it can be converted back into CAD. I'm starting with a case file for which I've already obtained fluid flow results using Fluence General Solver. The baseline design is a simple duct with air flowing from a constant velocity inlet to a pressure outlet. As you can see with this initial design, the total pressure drops as the flow passes through the duct, and the velocity at the outlet is very non-uniform. To begin the shape optimization, I will use the controls in the Design tab. I will start by defining the observables for which I want to see improvement. My first observable will be the pressure drop as measured between the inlet and the outlet. The second observable is a measure of the uniformity of the flow at the outlet. This itself will be a combination of three measures of variance in the flow components at the outlet. I'll create volume integral observables for the velocity in each of the coordinate directions, starting with the x direction. I will integrate the velocities within a box that surrounds the outlet, shown here, which is defined by the following coordinates. Now I'll create one for the y direction, and finally one for the z direction. Having created the individual velocity integrals, I will now combine them into a single compound velocity observable. For the operation type, I'll use a linear combination, and I'll select the three components. Combining them requires that I choose their relative weighting up front. In this instance, I'll weight them all evenly with a coefficient of 1. When you have multiple objectives like this, you could proceed by running the adjoint solver for each one. This way offers flexibility since you can easily explore how you would like to weigh their relative importance and blend them to guide the design improvement. Such a process may be preferred for complex problems or when you have competing observables. Alternatively, if you have sufficient insight into the nature of the problem, you can combine multiple observables into a compound observable. This requires that you pick relative weights for the observables before the adjoint solver is run. The benefit is that you will then only need to run the adjoint solver once per design iteration. I'll use the latter method here. To do this, I will linearly combine the flow uniformity observable with the pressure drop into one comprehensive observable. For this combination, Picking the relative weighting can require some trial and error. This may involve some experimental runs with different values for weights. I've already performed such experimental runs and found that for this particular case, I can get a balanced improvement in both observables if I make a relative reduction in the pressure drop coefficient. Now I'll select that comprehensive observable as that is the one for which I want the adjoint solver to calculate sensitivity data. I can specify that I plan to minimize this value so that if I wanted to display contours of the sensitivities, the reported quantities will be properly oriented. I will use the default settings for the solver controls for now. I will, however, be changing these settings during the calculation to improve convergence. I'll also keep the default monitors for convergence. I will be using the residual minimization feature to improve convergence. 
After initializing the system, I need to run a small number of iterations first without residual minimization enabled. 20 iterations should be sufficient. Then I can enable residual minimization using the Adjoint Solution Controls dialog box. Running another 20 iterations should lead to solution convergence. Some tips for using residual minimization are printed in the console when this scheme type is enabled. This concludes part one of this video series. In part two, I will use the results of the completed adjoint solver calculation to modify the mesh in such a way as to minimize the observables.